Hello, Steven here, and welcome back to another video on Apache NiFi. In today's video, I'm going to cover publishing records into Kafka using the publish Kafka record processor. So in order to do this, we're going to basically have a quick three-step processor set up here in our flow. And the first one's going to be, uh, if we jump over here, we can take a look at dbeaver, where we are going to be taking records out of one of our tables that we had set up in an earlier video. So in this case, we'll take a look here. We have some uh, filler data that I created, and I think they're about 75-ish thousand. Let's take a look at the count here. Yep, 75,000 here. So we're going to take these records, take them out of the table from uh, Cassandra, and then send them on over to a topic in Kafka and publish them there. So let's go ahead and get that started. Jump back on over here. Okay, so back in NiFi now. And the first thing we need is our query Cassandra. So let's go ahead and grab one of those. There we go. And in this one, we really only need to run it not very often. Uh, we'll do it once a minute. And from here, we are going to go ahead and configure it. So our connection provider, which we have a session provider already created to reach out to our center database cluster. And then our key space, we want to go grab that. So I'm going to take one of those node tables. So we'll take this one right here, journal.3 Charlie Bravo 72 and so forth. That's our key space. We don't need to set up a password or username because that is part of our session provider. So we're getting that from there. And because I'm querying this data out of my cluster, I, I personally like to have it set up for a quorum. That way, if I had any updates going into this table or something, I would get the correct answer. If I went to uh, query just one of the nodes that store the data, well, then I have a good chance that I might not have the most up-to-date. So to ensure that I have the correct up-to-date information, I'm going to do a quorum. And it looks like we're going to set this up for JSON. And the query we're going to use, so CQL select query. Go ahead and put that in there. So just select all from journal. And dot three Charlie Bravo 7. Fetch size is set up. And the rest of it can stay the same. All right, so we're good there. We failure retry, we'll just terminate those. And from here, I know I'm gonna to want to take this to a split JSON. It's from working with it, so I can prepare the data to get sent into Kafka. All right, so move that over here. And we should be able to get some data real quick. Let that go. All three nodes are going to pull that one in. Probably should have done it like that. Okay, so we got some data. We can go take a peek at it. And hopefully it's not going to be too big. Yeah, it's going to be a little big, isn't it? Oh, let's see if it can format it for us without crashing. There we go. A yeah, little patience and we got it. All right, so here's our data. Now we can see when we did a SQL query into Cassandra, it gave us back a array called results. And then we have all of our results inside of it. So that's kind of not how we need the data to be formatted uh, in order to publish to this to Kafka. Or at least that's how I want to publish it. Not as I don't want to publish the array into Kafka. I want to publish every record individual row right into it. So I need to break these out. And that's where we are going to take that parent, come back to our split. And what we're gonna do is split on, uh, actually I think I can just get away with doing that. Or it's gonna be this way, but you know what? I think I can just do results and that will work as well. I think it works both ways. 
And then after we're done here, we know from here, we should have individual JSON string uh, rows. So what I really want to do next is send that into a Kafka publisher. So we want Kafka. And we are going to use publish Kafka record. We'll go ahead and connect that so we can test the next part. So that's going to be the split. Terminate the failure in the original because I'm not handling for those right now. Get that off to the side, give us some room here. All right, so now we can go ahead and do this. And hopefully things turn out okay. Give it a second the process because we just did all three. Yeah, there's all a bunch of out there. All right, so let's make sure our results are the way we want them to be. I get out now. There we go. We have a row. Perfect. Script it off. So now we don't have the array anymore. We don't have to worry about that. So we have an individual flow file with an individual row to go into or publish. Let's go ahead and set up the publish Kafka record. So we're good on the settings unless we want to rename it. Our scheduling is okay. We want, we want this to process immediately. So we'll leave it on zero seconds. And now we need to configure the settings inside of our uh, Kafka publisher, our processor for publishing to the Kafka broker. And in this case, for my setup, and it's going to be whatever your setup is, but because I'm set up in Docker and I have the sharing the network, uh, I have the broker for my Kafka and my NiPy cluster inside the same network in Docker as well, I can call on them by container. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go for the broker container. That's its name. And the port number it's set up on. So 29092, that's my settings. It may not be the same for you. The topic, I'm going to keep it similar. So in this case, I'm going to do host dash MN, the name of the node source table came from basically. That's what I'm going to call the topic. I could merge all these into one topic if I wanted to as well. Okay, now the reason I'm using the... So I prefer whenever I'm working with uh, processors that have a record version of them, I prefer to use that as, as much as I can. The reason being is because I can save myself a couple of processors I don't have to set up. In this case, I can just go with the... Uh, the record version of the Kafka publish. So that means I can set my reader to be my JSON tree reader, my basic version of that. Uh, and then I can set a writer too. So how I want to write the data out into Kafka, right? Which is going to be the same thing. JSON record set writer, basic, no array. So that means I've changed my settings on my uh, read writer here to not pull or not to create the array. All right, so a couple other things, settings I need to set up in this case for how my setup is going. Uh, use transactions, I'm going to leave that untrue. I need to configure delivery guarantee. And best effort I'm not using, I'm going to be setting it to guaranteed replicated delivery. So if we look at that, we can see different details. This flow file will be routed to failure unless a message is re replicated to the appropriate number of Kafka nodes according to the topic configuration. So that's the one I'm going to pick. And then some other settings that may or may not apply. So I'm going to leave UTF-8 set, plain text, uh, no security mechanisms or anything like that. Not in this case, but you would configure it for whatever your settings are in your production environment or your test environment. Uh, max request size, I'm going to leave at one megabyte. Uh, acknowledge wait time, five seconds should work. Max metadata wait time, five seconds should work again. Uh, partitioner class, I'm going to leave it on the default, but you can go around Robin. So depending on your partition configuration for your topic, uh, the partition. So for here, which partition the records will go into if you need to change it and compression. And I'm not using any for this setup. So I'm going to apply. Now, if we jump on over to the Confluent Control Center, because I set up that Docker, uh, or the Kafka Docker Confluent uh, Docker container, which came with everything basically from Confluent. 
I have the access to the control panel, so it gives it makes it nice and easy for videos to kind of show things quickly. So if we go to topics, so we're in the cluster overview, let's go to our topics. We can see we don't have a topic. So two ways I can do this. I can either manually create a topic right now by adding a topic and setting it up. Or if I, since my cluster is set up this way, if I push into a topic that doesn't exist, so in this case, there is no topic in there. Oh, wait, did I set the topic? Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> so there is no host dash three Charlie Bravo seven topic right now. So if I publish this, uh, the broker will infer the schema and then it will create the topic. It would set up with the default uh, partitioning and go from there. So that's what we're gonna do in this case. But you could manually set it up beforehand if you wanted to as well. And that would work just fine. Now for here, we have to go back to settings and for failure and success. So I can route failures back into it if I want to, success. But I'm gonna terminate both of these because I'm not gonna do anything with them right now. But if I want to handle for my failures and they don't, so I don't lose that information, I can route them back into it or route them someplace else for holding or uh, maybe log in into a Elasticsearch server or something like that. All right, so we have 225,621 records, flow files waiting to be published into our Kafka broker. And it should all make a credit topic for us. Let's go ahead and start that. Uh, I think we should be good. There we go. And 3,500. So let's go see if they're working correctly. We're not getting an error there at least. We'll refresh this page. Hopefully we have a topic now. There's our topic right here. And what we could do is go to messages and we can see messages as being published into the topic in real time. Uh, we can see here we're around play. And if we scroll on over to the right, so you have your topic information here. So the topic name, uh, partition, the offset, timestamps, all the stuff comes of Kafka and part of the record information. But then we have our values, right? So we have our value UUID, value count, value date, DT, and then our host name and thread column. So there's all of our values. We can see those working just fine. Uh, we're getting records 35 seconds ago. We can jump back over here to Apache NiFi and we see we've already published all 225,000. So very quick there, right? Uh, matter of fact, if we go back here, we look at the overview, uh, yeah, our data's not updated in here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I don't know why that was negative, but we can see some stat changes here. Consumption, I'm not sure why that was not popping up yet. But there we go. So records are going into our topic. So if we wanted to, we could go back over here, we could turn them back on, have things flow. And... There we go, another 225,000 coming in here, being streamed right in there, being pushed into our Kafka topic. We can jump back over to our control panel, back to topic, go back to the messages, and now we can see messages. So we have producers and consumer information for our Kafka broker. You can see records are just flowing on in here. We also have access to the message fields on the side here too. We don't just need to scroll left and right. But there we go. We can see different values for everything. So everything's publishing in here nice and easy. Very, very good job, right? So I like that. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So in the next video, I'll make sure we'll be covering the consumer. So the consume Kafka record or consume Kafka processor, which will let us uh, connect to a topic in a Kafka broker and consume messages as they're being pushed out. Uh, in real time, allowing us to get a lot done. And there's some pretty good, good uh, use cases for this where like, uh, especially if you wanted to combine it with NiFi here, um, I could take a data source that I'm pulling into NiFi, I could publish it into a, a topic right away like I am now. And actually there's a lot you can do with uh, Kafka, which is uh, I could go ahead and use something like uh, use items like say ksql database uh, db so i could create myself a <clears throat> i could create tables or streams in here and say say i have a static table 
I could set up a Kafka connection to say some static data maybe from a SQL server or something, uh, pull in that table or that data. And then where you can't do, where one of the things you can't uh, do inside of Apache NiFi natively here is I can't join two things together, right? I can't say join one source data and then a second source data. And then as they're in NiFi, join them together in NiFi and spit out a new product, right? That's not something I can do in here. I can do some small enrichment and stuff like that with say um, query record. And I could use uh, lookups, lookup processors as well. But if I wanted to get really like complicated with a join, I really have to look at other options, either sending the data out to someplace else and then reconsuming again in NiFi, take it to a final uh, endpoint. Or I'd have to, I could do something like this, which is publish it out into a Kafka topic, say publish all my streams of my consumption of sources into a Kafka topic. And then I could use something like say KSQL to create tables or streams on that real time data and then join that data and then creating a new table or stream and then consuming that with NiFi to take that data someplace else. So this is why it can be pretty fun to be able to use something like this to be able to just consume this real-time data. All right, so that's all in this video. In the next one, we'll go ahead and cover the reverse, which is consuming the data from the topic we just created and then publishing it or uh, <laughs> uh, storing it into our MySQL table or Cassandra table as well. So either one of those work just fine. So we'll go ahead and do that next. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.